Hey, it's Josh Hewitt from Top Form Fitness. It is time to do it with Hewitt again. This is another follow-up from my uh, injury, my surgery recovery. And I just finished uh, completing the active range of motion phase. This phase was going to be an isometric exercise phase, so where I'm going to introduce isometric contractions into those range of motions that I've established. But I'm doing really well with my recovery, things are healing really well, so I'm also going to introduce some isolation exercises and some single arm compound movements into this phase as well. So I'm sort of uh, combining two phases. A link to the video from the last phase um, uh, above here or down in the description below, you can check that out. Basically what I'm doing is I'm following through, following up with some isometric holds in the position that I've come to. So for example, overhead, I've established got quite a bit of range of motion overhead now. So now to restore some strength and stability in that position, I'm going to actively resist backwards into that range for about six to 10 seconds. So here I'm working on lower trapezius, serratus involvement here. And then I'm going to be moving that out slightly, a little bit more low trap, diagonally pushing back to whatever range I can get and then isometrically holding, gently contracting into that range. And then out to the side, straight out. Now I'm looking at about my mid trapezius, a little bit of rhomboid, pushing backwards into that range. So I'm not doing stretching per se, I'm really actually, actually actively opening up range by contracting into the position. Then I'm going to go into some external rotation, so I can get about pretty good outward rotation now on the side. So I'm going to go into whatever range I can get and resist into that for six to ten seconds. And then I'm going to go into some rear deltoid, so it's out to the side instead of palm open. I'm going to be palm down, focusing on posterior delt, into that position. I'm also resisting into abduction for the medial deltoid. I'm getting some pretty good range of motion here, so I'm trying to activate the medial delt, upper trapezius, a little bit of rotator cuff, supraspinatus, in that position for six to 10 seconds. And then extending back as far as I can get. First, leading with the pinky, thumb in, and then externally rotated. So all different positions extending through that range as well. Finally, in front, internal rotation, and resisting inwards for pec activation as well. I'm also including some active flexion for bicep activation. I'm just being careful with this at this range. Um, I have to see the surgeon in two weeks from now for the final follow-up. So I just want to make sure I'm clear to do that. And then actively pushing into extension for tricep activation. But because this is going so well and things are feeling strong, I've introduced a few other exercises, such as single arm rows. Now, with the pulling or rowing movement in this horizontal plane, you can really focus on activating the lat and the rhomboid and minimizing bicep involvement by not pulling up here. Just keeping that straight through, driving the elbow back, holding and extending. So I've been doing some single arm work for the back. With bands, you can do this with a cable machine as well. Now, the strength is not nearly what it is on the on my dominant side and unaffected side, but that is getting much better as well. And just recently started to include some single arm pressing exercises. So chest press, keeping the resistance below the level of the shoulder, and then when I'm ready to increase resistance on that, moving it out. And also, this can be done with a cable machine as well, a selectorized resistance machine. Then we're moving on to band pull-aparts. This is one that I could only recently do. This past week, I was able to finally perform these without shoulder discomfort. And again, several rep repetitions of the band pull-aparts. Single arm. Stiff arm pull downs for lat activation. So reaching overhead, bringing that back behind as far as I comfortably can, and performing six to 10 repetitions with palm up and the same thing, palm down, which is a little more challenging. And then moving from a stiff arm pull down 
and to a bent arm tricep extension. Rarely isolating the tricep. So I've been really happy to be able to introduce these resistance training exercises into my routine now. Uh, normally I would recommend approaching uh, this from uh, several weeks or at least a couple weeks of the isometric work before you introduce isolation exercises and then move into single arm compound movements. What I'm not ready for yet in this phase of the program of my recovery is overhead work. So I can get my arm over there but I'm not going to be doing any pulling or pressing into an overhead position. I do feel that around the AC joint. Uh, things are still pretty tender uh, or unstable around the shoulder. But that's improving all the time, so I expect to be able to reduce that in a couple of weeks. Um, I'm also not doing any loaded bicep flexion work, and I'm not doing any two-arm exercises, two-arm pulls, two-arm pushes, focusing on it independently as well, so I can really isolate this side. Of course, I'm still doing exercises for the rest of my body. I'm still doing exercises for my, my stronger arm, uh, for lower body and core. I covered all of that in my previous video, so do check that out or post it again up here uh, and in the description below so you can see what, uh, what I'm doing to work around uh, this injury and still maintain as much strength as I can in the rest of my body. I'm going to be posting more videos as I progress. Those should be coming up soon. I'm seeing my surgeon, like I said, in a couple of weeks and hope to get cleared to move on to the next phase. Stay tuned for that. If you've got any questions or comments, post them down below. And until next time, stay strong.